molecular orbital diagram for N2 with a minus charge on it. Let's begin by drawing the atomic orbitals for nitrogen. If you want to draw the inner shell, you'll include the 1s. The next highest is 2s, and nitrogen has three degenerate 2p orbitals as well. This molecule is made out of two N atoms, so you need to copy out a second one over here and do your best to keep these at the same energy. And by that, I mean height on the page. These should be the same energy, that's 2S, and these should all be at the same energy, 2P. Great, again, what I've done in black is just the atomic orbitals. You came for the molecular orbitals. 1S orbitals overlap to make sigma 1s and sigma 1s antibonding. These two lines should have the same average height as these two because you're not creating or destroying any energy. The 2s orbitals will overlap to make sigma 2s and sigma 2s antibonding. Now I want you to be careful about the overlap between the 2p orbitals. For nitrogen and earlier, the lowest energy molecular orbitals are the pi 2p bonding orbitals. Next lowest is the sigma 2p bonding orbitals. The pi 2p antibonding orbitals. Then the sigma 2p antibonding orbitals. These two are switched in oxygen and fluorine and neon because of the atomic radius and the effective nuclear charge and the pull that the nucleus has on those orbitals. But for nitrogen and earlier, that's boron and carbon and lithium, it's just like this. Let's fill this with electrons. I included the inner shell, which means nitrogen's bringing seven electrons each. I know there's only five valence electrons, but there's seven total, and I'm including that first shell. There's two of them, and because there's a minus charge on this, there's an extra bonus electron. That gives me 15 electrons total. Let's fill it from the bottom up, Aufbau principle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Did you see that? I spread them out before I doubled them up. Hun's rule, 13, 14, 15. Great, this is my molecular orbital diagram for N2. Your teacher may ask you for the bond order, which is one half of the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding orbitals. You're gonna have to count that after you draw the diagram. Bonding orbitals have no asterisks, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons in bonding orbitals. In antibonding, we're looking for asterisks. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gives me a difference of 5. Half of that is 2.5. Well, that's not ideal. Half bonds are generally not stable. What can you do? The bond order is two and a half, and that's for sure. Congratulations. This is the completed molecular orbital diagram for N2 with a minus one charge. The only way N2 with any other charge would differ is in how many of these green arrows I have. Congratulations. You did it with me. Best of luck.